Holy One, help me today to love with gusto, to forgive with courage, to look for your grace, to seek presence, not comfort, to be grateful in all things, to receive you in whatever form you come to me. Help me today to be who you created me to be, not what others desire or expect, to trust you in what is difficult, to let your love flow through me without hesitation. Today, I surrender myself to your love, love that unites me with all creation and with you. For even though I am not fully aware, I am fully yours, and I give you my thanks. I give you my life. Amen. Good morning, Stone Village, and happy Sunday. I hope that all of you are well and safe in this world. All is well in my world. The Lord be with you, and let us pray. Prepare us, O God, to hear your word through the scripture of this day. Confront us with your claim upon our lives. Clarify the choices we must make if our lives are to have meaning and purpose. Help us to respond to the one who came as the bread of life, so we may know life at its fullest and at its very best. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The reading today is from Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, annoyed because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And not, not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day. When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all of the wonderful things that he was doing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we don't know her name. We don't know where she comes from. We don't know why she appears in the synagogue on this particular Sabbath day. I can picture her, though, a weary woman, resilient and resigned, a woman bent over and quite unable to stand up, a woman who spends her days staring at the ground, staring at her own feet, staring at the dusty sandals of those who pass her by on the road. Understand, she's not actively avoiding life, the act of gazing into another's eyes or peering into the sky. She has no choice. She has no agency. By the time the bent-over woman encounters Jesus, she's been crippled for 18 years. I wonder if she showed up for worship every week during those two decades. I wonder if anyone noticed her. I wonder what hope or meaning or solace the weekly ritual offered her, if any. I wonder about her day-to-day -day life. What do you wonder? Where have you seen her in your life? What does she represent for you? Would you have been compelled to help her? reaching out a hand to steady her, to guide her, to support her, to heal her. If not, why not? According to the reading, 
The woman doesn't ask Jesus for help when she appears in the synagogue. He's teaching, most likely surrounded by a crowd. She doesn't approach him. Who knows if she even notices him, bent over as she is. But he sees her. He sees her. When he calls her over and she approaches, he pauses his teaching and says the thing Jesus says throughout the gospel when he encounters the sick, the broken, the dying, the dead. You are set free from your ailment. Then the gospel tells us Jesus laid his hands on her and immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. This is the line where I pause. I struggle a bit to comprehend its reality. Immediately she stood up straight. <laughs> I pause at this line because I am not accustomed to thinking of the church, capital C Church, as a place where hunched, crippled, exhausted people are invited, encouraged, and released to stand up straight. Especially not people who are disenfranchised and marginalized. Women, people of color, the LGBTQI community, the poor, the homeless, the elderly, the incarcerated, the mentally ill, the differently abled, the uneducated, the spiritually broken. Rarely are they offered a place to stand and certainly not offered a place to stand up straight. It is a bit embarrassing to me ordained as I am, not thinking of the church as a place where people who are unable to stand up on their own can come to have their dignity restored and their full potential realized. The truth is, when I think of the church, I often picture people bent over, bent over under the weight of shame, judgment, and visibility false piety, condemnation, legalism, judgment, and harmful theology. Why is that? Unfortunately, the gospel itself offers the answer. As soon as Jesus unbinds the crippled woman, the leader of the synagogue voices his displeasure, his annoyance, essentially, his angry criticism drowns out her joyful praise. There are six days on which work ought to be done, he tells the crowds. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. In other words, the leader protests because Jesus disrupts the regular Sabbath schedule of the synagogue. Jesus messes with tradition. Worse, he places a socially expendable, physically disabled, spiritually vulnerable woman at the center of the tra tradition. Jesus allows the woman's need to interrupt his own teaching and welcomes her song of praise, even though it upends the synagogue's order of service. To be clear, I do not believe the synagogue leader is a bad man. His intentions are not evil, and his concerns are not without merit. <laughs> he cares about right worship, right belief, right practice. He cares about honoring the Sabbath, obeying God's laws, and upholding the faith-filled traditions of his spiritual community. There is nothing intrinsically wrong with any of these goals. Believe me, I know. But what the leader misses is the heart of the Sabbath, the heart of God's law, the heart of the tradition. 
What the leader misses is compassion. The kind of compassion that trumps legalism every single time. The kind of compassion that doesn't cling to orthodoxy simply for orthodoxy's sake. The kind of compassion that consistently sees the broken body, the broken soul, the broken spirit, before it sees the broken commandment. This story, like so many gospel stories, illustrates a basic truth about God's kingdom. The kingdom doesn't care about our timing or our sense of etiquette, or our obsession with propriety and decorum. The kingdom cares about love. It cares about love now, always right now. Most of us, like the woman in today's story, knows what it is like to be bound by the circumstances that diminish distort, and wound us. Most of us know, or have known, what it's like to lose agency, mobility, and dignity to forces too powerful for us to defeat on our own. Some of us are still bent over because of the experiences we had in previous churches or other places in the world where we were not seen cherished, called, invited, unbound, and released to praise God with our unique stories. So how, given these realities, can we leave room for Jesus to show up and surprise us? How can we make certain we are not so entrenched in our theological, liturgical, cultural, or political points of view that we fear and resist the new, the unorthodox, the unconventional? How can we make sure that our opinions, agendas, religious practices, and preferences don't get in the way of God's tender, compassionate, unbending? Jesus responds to the leader of the synagogue by calling the healed woman a daughter of Abraham. Ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? Jesus doesn't simply stop at freeing the woman. He restores her to community, to her community. At the same time, he calls on the community to repent of its hypocrisy and narrow-mindedness and embrace her as its own, not as an object of pity or scorn, but as a daughter, as an heir, as a human being worthy of both love and dignity. Jesus laid his hands on her and immediately she stood up straight. And that's the work always before us always, always to restore stature, dignity, community, and honor people bent over in all of the terrible ways the world harms and cripples them. Jesus is all about unbending, our standing tall, our finding our voices so that we can praise the God who has unbound us. May we be about such compassionate acts as well. Not just when it's convenient and easy, but every day of our lives. God's love is unconditional, yes. Yet God's love also asks us to love as we are loved. So let us choose love this day and every day. Let us dedicate ourselves to sowing seeds of beauty in broken and barren landscapes, ensuring that no matter where people stand, they can stand up straight. Thanks be to God, amen. Have a wonderful day, stoners. I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye.